Given all these factors, it is necessary to consider extending the current power rationing hours, especially for residential customers. From last week's update, ZESCO did indicate that the average power rationing time was 14 hours per day. Therefore, the nation is now informed that the official power rationing hours will extend to 17 hours daily, effective 1st September You're welcome to Amazing Minds. Oh, that was a big sip. Zambia's first late night show. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. Hit the bell and share. The show is available twice a week, Mondays and Fridays, 22 hours Central African time. And the podcast is available on Spotify for podcasters, 20 hours Central African time. You're welcome. Please do like, share, let a friend know. Tell a friend to tell a friend about Amazing Minds. Uh, Monday segment is for political discussions like today. And Friday is Bible Talks, which you guys really need to start watching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Mr. Shafaya. <laughs> yeah, so it's in it. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. And yourself? I'm a blessed young man. Oh, okay. Nishimbi, ndi. No. Meto. We are the metals of this world. Drinking some ginger tea today with this flu that's flying around. Guys, be careful. Keep yourselves warm. Uh, drink ginger tea. And uh, Chofia here was telling me that this is usually supposed to be for preventative measures mm -hmm. and not for taking when you've already experienced the, the flu or the cough. So please take good care of yourselves. There is an unruly flu going around. I was about to laugh when I saw the way that uh, you were talking. Yeah. You know, your mouth expression was like, this is not the normal tea or coffee. <laughs> 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 it didn't look too happy, sir. <laughs> now, it's good that you said it yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's the only thing that you need to cover so you don't get cold. <laughs> All right, so uh, we are starting off on a sad note today. We are looking at a number of uh, news items. For starters, Maureen Monawasa passed away last week uh, after a short illness. Then we are going to look at the government buying Zambif's 8,000 hectares, hectare farm at $13 million. And then we're going to look at Zambia and DRC in a diplomatic standoff. And then Zesco to implement 17 hours of Lord Shedding. Ta -da. Lucky Sweets. <laughs> Did you ever see the advert for Lucky Sweets? Mm -mm. Lucky oh, Sweets, Nyam Zambi. Yeah. Oh. It was something like that, like, Ta -da, Lucky Sweets. Oh. Maybe now you are there. How about Bam Bam Bogam? Bam Bam Bam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was that. Bubble Gum, then there was the Bogam. You know the Bogam, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah. Dumaround round ones. Uh -huh. Do they still sell those? I was asking myself the same question. <laughs> Yeah, it's been long since I saw them. Leave it in the comments whether you know where we can find Bam Bam Bogams. 
Yeah, but maybe hygiene purposes these days too no ma ma bubble gum yari ope. That are not wrapped. Eh? Yeah. There were those um uh, sweets, the orange ones which were like absolutely sweet. Boringo. It was like a cod- That's what they were called. They were white inside. Yeah, the Bol- yeah, like those usually when you taste them because the the coating was sugar mm-hmm. with color. When you taste them you first have to taste the salt of people's hands. Damn. As they were <laughs> trying to pick one <laughs> <laughs> yeah and the good that still do still do that matter i know the immune system mm. was strong to are kosha sana immune system no, since apparently when we were babies we used to eat cockroaches that's what our parents did us ah what did ya sana ba bashani impemf no my was since to mountain to nyako covid i know i i i don't drink water with green things inside mm. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say ah uh, but you okay Yeah man. You ready for this? Yeah, I was born ready. Yeah. <laughs> you know whenever I ask you if you're ready, you right. look shocked like ah, what gives you the impression I'm not ready? Uh, you see that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was born ready my friend. <laughs> yeah, so uh just a few days before uh, the memorial of uh, her late husband Levi Patrick Monawasa, the former first lady Maureen Monawasa answered the Lord's call. Uh, last week she passed away after a short illness were told that she was admitted to Minasoko hospital i find it odd that they used the words answered the lord's call mm, uh, i don't know it just it sounds a little <laughs> it's a, it's a very pentecostal thing to say eh? oh no i'm just assuming i don't know for us <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah yeah too bad for Marine I, I like how you assume a very neutral position whenever it's like a Mm. A, 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 a church thing like you are just ah, mm. I, i don't know i don't know <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> yeah since people are so sensitive these days yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh by the way everything we say on the show is for entertainment purposes only uh we do not we are not liable for what we say yeah on, and by the way there's bible talks every week uh ideally every friday but by many by amazing minds you catch my brother bahatram yeah uh giving you some uh, words of wisdom from the bible yeah, yeah. that's true that's uh, true. as he said you need to i'm telling on zero what the bible talks I'm, i'm a deep guy hmm? <laughs> i'm a deep guy <laughs> so yeah um she answered the lord's call and we we are saddened by the news mr kawana gives us um an official statement from the government concerning the same thing take a look on behalf of the Manawasa and Kakubo family government regrets to announce the untimely passing of our beloved former first lady Mrs. Maureen Manawasa Mrs. Manawasa passed away at Minasoko Medical Center after a short illness His Excellency the President Mr. Hakainde Hichilema and the first lady Mutinta Hichilema have expressed great shock and deep sorrow over this unfortunate incident and have since called the family to convey their condolences as the nation joins in mourning. The funeral gathering is at her residence in Roma Park. More details will be communicated in due course. That was the information and media permanent secretary Mr. Tabokawana giving a message of condolences and I believe he also spoke on behalf of uh, the president and the first lady uh, in giving the condolences I hope we'll hear from them directly as well or I hope they did give a statement directly What do you think about Maureen Monas I think she was a um I think she kept a safe a good distance from the public eye after having uh left the state house a healthy distance from the public eye uh compared to the other first ladies maybe the other first lady who kept mm. kept such a distance is Tandiwe Banda so uh, I feel like Maureen Manawasa is one of those who if you speak about the other first ladies mm. she's one of those at the top of the people that keep such a distance yeah yeah because she's been involved in politics we know that she's been involved with the UPND uh, oh really yeah i think she was even ambassador at some point Mm, I could yeah. be speaking out out of pure ignorance. Oh, okay. Um because I didn't I didn't hear much about her. Mm. 
Yeah, when I think about it, actually, mm. which other first ladies? I think the only first lady I used to hear of much was Christine Kaseba. Yeah, me too. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> I think Bam or in Manawasa, it's just Christine Kaseba who's so been out there. Too. Sorry, like, what did you say? Bam. What does that mean? Bam or in Manawasa. Apart, Apart from? from? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, anyway, you didn't ask me, but what I think of her, not so much. <laughs> I was going to. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah well, not it, so much. I think um, I didn't know much about her except from what I've just told you. She was yeah. involved with the UPND a lot. Yeah, uh, she was ambassador. Uh, One thing that that, 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 that d- surprised me is that uh, the video we will play to you guys. Um, I believe it's the next video. Uh, what surprised me was that mm. um, a UPND representative, the Deputy SG of the UPND was speaking highly of her. Mm. I don't know whether it's just the thing that people do when people die, we speak mm-hmm. great of them or they had a relationship, but mm. it did surprise me that the UPND mm. uh, Deputy SG mm. uh, spoke. Mm. That's an interesting way of looking at it. Yeah. <clears throat> at first myself, I thought uh, they were justified since she was involved with the UPND at some point. Uh, but then to come and think of it, since you mentioned that uh, this thing of saying good things about people after they die yeah uh, of course it's it's in our tradition it's more like our culture yeah uh, almost everywhere in the did world. you see even i was trying to be politically correct <laughs> exactly trying but, to avoid but that's what, but that's the, <laughs> 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 all you guys didn't see it we cut there <laughs> yeah so anyway what i wanted to say is that um maureen when also was going through some stuff i believe just before yeah. she died. Yeah. I remember that there was an issue of um, her being sued or something like that. I think debt. Yeah, yeah. debt, yeah. Mm. Uh, so, Bailiffs, I think. Yeah, something like that. Mm. So it, it's almost like she was like in, in distress. So it's interesting that uh, the European who are in government now for someone who supported them, they're only coming out now. To, to say, say sorry. I was sorry, Bafo. <laughs> uh, yeah, but anyway, we also don't know uh, what you, like, the, the, the short... You know, the short oh, I was actually about to ask you that, whether there was any detail on that. Uh, no, I don't think so. But yeah. anyway, I didn't know much about her. Uh, she seems like a cool person. Yeah, yeah. she did seem like a... Yeah, so mm. when I heard this news, uh, I saw, I felt bad. Yeah, like... The Monawasas genuinely seemed... Ish, let me let me say it anyway. Mm-hmm. The Monawasas almost mm-hmm. genuinely seemed like the only family that truly cared for Zambia. Yeah, you, can, you can say that. I don't, want to, that I don't want to speak of the Hichilemas yet because they're still... Uh, I think we can make a proper judgment after they're out. The Monawasa was here how many years? Eight years? Eight Seven? years. Eight. eight I believe it's... To 2008, uh-huh. seven years. So about seven, yeah. Mm. Uh, in the seven years... Rupia did three years, right? For Rupia, yeah. Yeah. So for the seven years that Manawasa did and the three years that HH has done right now, I can almost conclude that uh, the Manawasa family was better than the HLMA family. <laughs> there, are diff- there are certain factors that are different. For example, the economy wasn't as bad as it is now then, globally. Um as well as uh, locally, but also regionally. I Manawasa faced some of the, 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 the hardest times. You remember the Hippic? Hippic. Yeah. Oh, highly indebted poor country. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I mean, you see, I find it hard to... Uh, you see, sometimes I don't want us to make excuses for these people. Yeah. Okay, it's like the argument. <laughs> Did our fathers, our parents manage money better than we do, uh, which is a very high likelihood, mm-hmm. or did they have it easier because their times weren't as bad economically? Yeah, but also we can argue that this time also we've got information at our fingertips. So also we have got a better chance of making that. Ah, and okay, okay. See, and we, we have better it. ways. I, I think I talk about it, about this all the time, mm-hmm. how this past Christmas, mm-hmm. um, when we just got into 2024, I saw a lot of people posting on Facebook mm-hmm. saying things like, uh, is this really January? How come I still have money? <laughs> oh. Yeah, and this was partly because there was a general... Who do you play with? Because <laughs> in my circles, it was January. <laughs> so <was> some 70 days. <laughs> of course, there are some people who are saying uh, we are on 100th January and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But then there were some people that were, they may have been jokingly saying it, mm-hmm. but it showed me that mm-hmm. just the way we talk on Facebook, like, mm-hmm. I don't want you to come to me saying, Next uh, next month being January, I don't want you to come to me saying um, you're my last hope <laughs> when you were dancing on Christmas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And on the basis of that, people learned to be disciplined to even a, a small extent. Mm-hmm. Okay. But 
I'm just talking about how a culture can change in a very short space of time mm. on the basis of the accessibility to information, social media that we have now, mm. uh, which puts us at an advantage when it comes to managing money. Mm. Yeah, mm. so you, you do have a point. And maybe based on that, that's why uh, HH should be in a better position to yeah. produce better results. Exactly. Anyway, it's also maybe because I'm biased, I'm very disappointed with HH. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? Do you think if you were, if we had amazing minds during Manawasa's time, mm -hmm. What would you speak? What would you say of Manawasa? Because you know there were critics of Manawasa yes, of course. during his time. Uh, As a matter of fact, he may have been the most criticized president. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's hard for me to say, but uh, just from on top of my head, I don't think that my stance on these things would ever change. I would still be critical of them. So, if, so if they would there, be doing it, would a there ever politics, be a pre would there ever be a president who is in power who you speak well of while in power? Uh so well, uh <laughs> <laughs> on the spot that, eh? <laughs> that's an interesting yeah so uh, you know that I've been speaking about these issues for a very long time yeah uh, before I joined Amazing Minds yeah yeah so uh, I, I, I remember that anyway I started this uh, during the times of uh, Rupia Banda mm -hmm. yeah so when Sata came in I was very happy but of course a bit naive uh, when uh, Ed Galongu came in I knew what was coming uh, I was speaking the way that I speak and now we have Godaka in the HDM who I voted for, and maybe I even convinced other people to vote for. Mm. Yeah, and I'm still, still speaking like this. So uh, it's hard for me to think of a president who uh, would be good enough for me not to speak the way that I speak. So even if they'll be doing a lot of right things, we'll be focusing on the things that they are not doing right so that we mend those things as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That, that, that would, uh, yeah. But otherwise, uh, the times of Manawasa, so I was also very young, so I can't really remember how good it was. Because also people say in Manawasa, we know what, 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 yeah, yeah. And what, but we don't know for sure. What Do, number dollar, what five kwacha. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, all, all, all we remember is that people were saying cabbage, cabbage, cabbage. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, which was a bad thing to say. <laughs> yeah, but also... Uh, I think it's it's a culture here. All the presidents go through that. Oh yeah, we we've got a name for each one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, we can argue that now it's getting less because people are getting more sensitive. People are getting more scared to a great extent. Now we no longer attack the person of mm -hmm. the president. Mm -hmm. We attack. Ish, you looked at my ticket. Now we quite wrong. Fimbi dai. Serious. I didn't quite. You are like. No, I was trying to hear. I was looking at your team. <laughs> yeah, so um, now the names are no longer attacking the person of the president, but rather the, his way of doing things. Like we have names like... That's promise. Exactly. Which don't necessarily attack... <laughs> they don't necessarily attack the person of mm -hmm. the individual, but they attack... Because I think this is what pe police are picking people up for. When, yeah, they, although, attack, although, yeah, when although, they attack the person. Yeah, yeah. Although, you know what I think? Hmm. I think the president should be attacked as a person. Yeah? Yeah, the truth is that people are insulting HH in their homes. Is it, are we going to stop them? Yeah, no, you can't do that. Yeah. You can't if stop you them, are yeah. a president, first of all, the time that you are going to stand as president, you should be ready for this thing. Yeah, uh, we will leave Chofia's address in the... <laughs> 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 no, speak, black man, speak. Yeah, that's why HH himself he removed the law of defamation of the president. Yeah. Although arguably people are still using other laws to stifle because Membe spoke about HH he was arrested. Mm -hmm. Okay, but Membe, what was he expecting? You heard what he said. Yeah, but you know, my my <laughs> my point is that HH uh, himself he removed the defamation of the president, so he knows that the president is being insulted. Yeah, he does. Not that I'm encouraging people to insult the president. Yeah, I'm yeah. encouraging people to be free to say what they want. Yeah, if you're a good leader, if you hear that they're insulting you or they're insulting the president, you need to sit down with them and understand why they're insulting you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I believe a great man of God once said, "If people call you a dog the first time, ignore it. If people call you a dog the second time, ignore it. But if they call you a dog the third time, look check. behind mm -hmm. to check if you have a tail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's important sometimes to, even Jesus said, what do people say? Who do people say I am? And who do you say I am? Because sometimes it's important to know just what people are thinking. Um, and that way, if you surround yourself with yes men, people who just say yes to everything you say, uh, then the blind will definitely lead the blind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
way of uh, putting throwing in some bible talks in there. oh yeah yeah <laughs> catch bible talks uh <laughs> joffy has given you the details <laughs> exactly. yeah. yeah so anyway uh, uh my, my sympathy are with the manawasas and the kakugos yeah yeah thoughts and prayers may, may i so rest in peace uh, i don't know what time people will be seeing this but on monday there will be a, a state funeral national morning okay yeah with a Spina flag fly at yeah Ah, yeah, and the, so since all, all shows of entertainment nature yeah. is suspended, but ours airs at twenty. At twenty, so yeah, yeah, that's why the flag is still up. Yeah, <laughs> would have put it at half <laughs> had the show been airing at fifteen hours. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the UPND Secretary General, Deputy Secretary General, gives her message of condolences as well as uh, another political representative. Uh, I believe a minister of Doreen Mwamba. Exactly. Of, uh, community what what? Yes, community what what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check it out. It was a people's person um, at some functions where women were concerned or were gathering. She would be there. She was a motherly person. She was a people person, and uh, she was a hard worker. She was a unifier, and uh, like that. Um, even at the time when. Uh, the president is a female politician that is what I've taken from her politics is not about insults politics is not about being disrespectful politics is not about name calling politics is about service service to the people and I think that is what I have learned and I've taken from her may her soul rest in peace um, you can give her a moment of silence from wherever you're watching we are on the show, so we can do that. Yeah. In an update on uh, JJ Scofield, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ray Hamonga is smiling for the first time. This is strange. I just took this picture. Sorry. Have we ever had a video of Ray Hamonga? Smiling? No, 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 of Ray Hamonga generally, a video. Yeah, I always see. I always see static. No, it's always static. Have you noticed there's this oh, one? There's this one picture they always use yeah, all the yeah. time. Even yeah. the time we were reporting on the C5 when they shot those guys, mm -hmm. there's this one static picture they always use, mm -hmm. and then there's his voice. Yeah. No, it, when the matter is highly political, they they show him. Like, oh, already. Uh, last week, it's just like light, yeah. Last last week we had. Uh, and Dera, but, uh, there was a video of him talking actually. And interesting enough... On the show? We had it? No, no, we didn't have it. Ah, okay. Yeah, but we were going to have it. <laughs> if, if Zesco didn't do what they did. Do you remember what Zesco did last week? Yeah, yeah last yeah. week, Power went, but I didn't see the videos that were left. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah, it was one of them. Yeah, he was there. He was speaking. And interesting enough, uh, the way that he was looking, he was seated on this same chair. Yeah. Of course, he was wearing a different looking uniform, but it's a uniform that we've seen on a lot of pictures that when they remove these statements, mm. like the way you're saying, there's still pictures. Yeah. yeah so it almost uh, looked like he's always looking like that on this chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so uh, he gave us an update that six people have been arrested. It's not really an update. I think we brushed on this last week. Yeah, but now um, they are formally charged. Oh, now they've formally been charged yeah. uh, with assisting in the in the escape of, um, of JJ Banda. The Zambia Police Service wishes to inform the public about the arrest of Lombe Charlie on August 9, 2024. One of the wives of J. Emmanuel Banda who escaped from lawful custody while admitted to Chipata at Chipata General Hospital, it should have been too. Lombe Charlie was formally charged on August 9, 2024 and was subsequently released on police bond. Following further investigation into the circumstances surrounding the escape, two police officers, Mfungwe Phineas and Kabole Benson, as well as three prison warders, namely Sakala Moses, Nathan Mbao, and Musa Spider Zulu, were arrested on August 12, 2024 and later released on police bond. They have all been charged with the offense of aiding a prisoner to escape contrary to section 120 chapter 87 of the laws of zambia uh, all six suspects have been released on police bond and will appear in court soon to answer to the charges leveled against them yeah so basically uh, the six the three prison warders two policemen and one of his wives uh, lombe charlie lombe charlie <laughs> lombe charlie has been have been arrested and charged with aiding a prisoner to escape. So these guys have been released on 
uh, police bond, but will appear in court soon yeah. to so answer for these. I hope you heard those names. So Elijah. Oh yeah, yeah, Mr. Simwanza. <laughs> uh, we are unbreeded. We are giving you the <laughs> names as they are. <laughs> and thank you so much for supporting the show and uh, watching the show. We we love to see your engagement all the time. Yes, so that's that's an update in the JJ case. Uh, I, I don't know. Do you, do you do you suppose the the prison warders could really have? Anyway, it's it's hard to comment on the case that's in court. But <laughs> oh, but now they are suspects. So until they prove themselves innocent. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, guilty and to prevent. Oh no, no, it's <laughs> <laughs> the police yeah. have named them. So I'm sure there's uh, <clears throat> there's. Uh, there's a reason why they've been named so there's a good reason yeah so yeah we'll see what happens because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mm, I always wonder could he really have they should have been someone outside that's what i would think of course but i mean unless as i told you it seems like he's, athletic he can do that yeah so <laughs> how about his wound that no, you needed to dip in salt. <laughs> yeah, three illegal gold miners are believed to have died at Shindano Mine in Dengue area of Kasempa district. Zanis reports that the accident happened at Mulompwe Mine, where mining operations were halted. Minister of Labor and Social Security Brenda Tambatamba has expressed disappointment that the mining activities have continued at the mine despite government's directives to stop. Yeah, like people listen to directives. That's why we have police to enforce directives because people don't just listen to laws. No, don't kill. Therefore, all 18 million Zambians will not kill. I'm shocked that, that uh, Brenda Tambatamba is shocked that people are mining where they say they shouldn't mine. And I'm also shocked that she's talking about Kasim. Why? Uh, <laughs> well, uh... Anyway, <laughs> it's, it's unfortunate that these illegal miners have died. Yeah. Uh, this illegal mining has continued. Uh, of course, we know that it won't stop. I was laughing about Kasempa because of another thing that I heard, but uh, anyway, I'll save it for another day. Yeah. But anyway, this just shows us how much minerals we have. In Kasempa, there's gold. Mm. Everywhere, everywhere you go, they are finding out gold like it's wildfire. Yeah. In Mpika, there's gold. In Rufunsa, there's gold. Mm. In Mumbai, there's gold. But we are quiet about these things. We are talking about Mopani. We are talking about FQM. If my minds were maybe in the seed, I'm not mm. no, sorry, not FQM. Mopani and the KCM. KCM. If my mind were maybe in the seed, we still talk about them. Mm. We're talking about copper mines still. Yeah. And also, you yeah. see, this illegal mining, I'm surprised that the minister is surprised because uh, these illegal miners have been uh, enabled by people who've got a lot of money. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if you saw there was a there was a story I think last week or the other week in the Diggers newspaper. Yeah. When they were talking about uh, you remember the accident at Sensei? Yeah. After the because that's that's an illegal place that they were doing the work. Like they were doing the illegal mining. That's why they were like uh, Nimilako, Nimilako. You yes, remember that video? Exactly. Mm. Now, after they started that uh, rescue operation, according to the story, according to News Diggers investigation, those people who are tasked to in the rescue operation, they started taking part in the illegal mining. Ah. Yes. And this my this copper is being processed in townships in Chimwemwe. Ah. Yes. And the minister, apparently, he's aware, the minister of commerce, Mr. Chipokamlenga, who's also an MP there in Chingot. Yeah? Yes. So they know that these things are happening. They know that they're happening. Not only that. Could you ban up a roadblock, Mama in Gominicus? So, all those who are taking the illegal copper, they are paying people who apparently belong to the ruling party. Oh. Yes, those revelations are all there in the investigations, the, 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 the news diggers. Mm. Yeah. So, it's interesting that the minister is surprised yeah. with the illegal mining. Yeah, no, her surprise is quite shocking. We are surprised that you are surprised, <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Miss, Mrs., I don't know, Tamba Tamba. Yeah, I like her, by the way. You do? Yeah, she's one of those. You know, it's rare for me to like these ministers. Yeah, I'm actually shocked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this one seems, uh, what can I say? Ah, anyway, I just like her. It's like the way I like information and media permanent secretary. Yeah, exactly. Mr. Kawana. Yeah. <laughs> and I surprisingly also like... Uh, um, me too. 
Aha. Uh, <laughs> Uncle Cornelius. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the government has um, bought, or we received reports that government has bought uh, Zambif Taiwa Estate, which is up to, uh, which which they say ZNS was to use 8,000 hectares uh, for maize production. This was news that reliably came, at least through the papers you guys have seen there that we've actually put, I like that we actually put a newspaper there so you can see that it was, uh, yeah, a, a fact which both Zambif and the government are now denying, even though we saw um, ZNS officials, high ranking officials, we're talking about the commander mm. uh, on site in video, mm. uh, talking about how, you know, every food comes from Land anyway, check it yeah, out. By the way, sorry, before you play that clip. Yeah. Uh, so that story in the newspaper came as a result of this visit by ZDNS and Zambia Correction Services. Yeah. Mm. So the, the newspaper came as a result of this. That's okay. where the story came from. Okay. So in short, ZDNS and the Zambia Correction Facilities are the ones who broke the news. Okay. That government has procured this farm now. Okay. It belongs to this government. Yeah, check out the... Oh, the government wants us every food stuff comes from the ground and that's why even when we are here we know that the food stuff which we are going to get from here came from the ground and the, the, we we are really moving at a, a rapid speed we started a long time ago we could have been here this even this crop would have been ours but now because of a bit of delay here and there until now we have been assured that the farm is for the government and that's why like my colleague has said it will be a, 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 the government the farm run by national service and correctional service you know to me actually the things that stood out in this mm. was the fact that he said that they've been assured that this farm now belongs to the government yeah yeah and also you see um because I know that you're going to talk about government denying mm -hmm. that they, they bought, actually even Zambia themselves denying. Yeah. Yeah. But you see, this because now the question remains, where did General Solochi get this? Exactly. With the, his, uh, his colleague from the... Yeah. With his colleague from the Zambia Correction of uh, Services, uh, this uh, Frederick Chilkut. Where did they get the information? Because if you look at this, what was happening here, it's... I don't know if you've seen these people move when they have operations like these ones. Mm. When the commander himself has got an operation like this. Mm. It's an actual procession. Yeah. If you see in the video, there are also a lot of other uh, uniformed individuals that have been seen there. If you Because there was a whole procession that we saw on TV. Yeah. So this couldn't have been a mistake. It's not, it's not a small thing for the commander himself to. No, yeah. no. And you can see from his excitement, he was even saying that eh, this. Why, why are you giving me that face? What, what face? <laughs> like I think, this guy is it going to be safe after this. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't worry, man. I'm no. responsible for what I say. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, my mind was so far. Okay. You know, I, I, yeah. I zoned out for a bit. Yeah, oh, but I'm okay. but I'm hearing. Yes. Yeah. Judging from his excitement. It's also, he revealed some information to say government has been pursuing this place yes. for a long time. Yes. He even said, even this crop that's here would have been ours. <laughs> there were just some delays. <laughs> so now we are, we've got the assurance that this farm belongs to the government. Not only that, they went to meet someone, a, a, a Zambif employee. Mm. I don't know if employee or something or director. Yeah, they went in an office, a white guy. Mm. So this was not a mistake. This information was that they've bought this farm. Yeah. That's why even in the newspaper, they didn't make any mistake. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, I'm thinking, uh, because now it's just interesting. And uh, sometimes I don't like it the way we treat this uh, military personnel, because uh, right now we're supposed to have journalists calling ZNS, calling General Solochi to ask him. Yeah. To say, so the secretary at the treasurer has refused. So where are you getting, where did you get that information? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I mentioned this being a procession because it, was, it wasn't a mistake. So it could be that uh, General Solochi and uh, his colleague, uh, Chirukutu, they are also just victims. Someone assured I, them I, to say now this I highly believe, I highly believe they are victims. They were mm. told this. Mm. Mm. And then the person who told them was also told. And then yeah. things. Now, the, the, the thing that brings me uh, a couple of questions is, firstly, I'm going to show you a video shortly of Mr. Kalaba questioning the transaction to begin with, with valid questions that I too have. Uh, he talks about how the transaction is strange altogether because the government does not need to procure land uh, when the president can get it. 
for free by force or yeah. by yeah. willing yeah. or by other other method yeah. so basically it's a questionable thing for the government to buy land of course there could be equipment on the piece of land but why didn't they buy the equipment and transfer the land to the president Take a look at Mr. Kalaba's statement and then I will give you my comments later on. The transaction that has happened between uh, a, a government and Zambif is extremely irregular. Irregular in the sense that government normally doesn't buy land. Uh, under the Compulsory Acquisition Act, uh, the president can get any land on behalf of the people of Zambia as long as there's interest in that particular land. He will revoke title. He will revoke, is it a mining license? For as long as there's just anything that is of interest to Zambian people, the president will invoke uh, that act. It is strange and frightening that uh, government has proceeded to, to offer to buy uh, land of about 8,000 hectares uh, from Zambif. That's an irregularity that we have not seen. And I can report to you right now that as citizens first, we have begun consulting our lawyers because we want to stop the transaction. The transaction is meant to rob the people of Zambia of their resources, which should go to other areas of need. But they are taking transactions, but they are using money for their own personal benefits. So for us as CF, we take strong exception to this. And we have given our lawyers to study the matter and uh, possibly go to court and put up an injunction to restrain this transaction. I speak as a, former, uh, as a former lands minister. I know what should happen in matters of land acquisition. This is irregular, it's pure corruption happening. That is the former minister of lands. He does have an idea of what he's talking about. Uh, the act does support what he's saying. Uh, we'll put it up there for you. So this is a very questionable transaction. However, the government through the Secretary of the Treasury, Mr. Nkolokosa, has denied such claims. And Zambif has also come out with their own statement denying. They said Zambif wishes to advise its shareholders that a sale has not taken place with respect to its Chaiwa farm. In the event that a successful offer to for the farm is received, Zambif will follow due process in terms of notifying the market and obtaining any relevant shareholder approvals. As applicable. Next time, say Chiawa Farms. What did I say? Chaiwa. Oh, <laughs> Chiawa. <laughs> I hope this is not what I've been saying, though. <laughs> no, but some people have been saying that, so I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, Chiawa Farms. So I would almost think that both Zambia and the government are only denying after hearing the questions. Mm -hmm. Coming from Mr. Kalaba, that's no, no. what I would. Okay, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, so Mr. Kalaba is the politician, of course. He's the uh, he's the voice that people listen to. He's mm. the one who was on the news. Mm. But a lot of people talked about this transaction mm. on social media, especially. And I feel like this is just my thought. Yeah. After ZDNS did that, and then people started talking, because I think there are also some details that we should mention. The the, the thirteen million dollars. Mm. That's what is going to be spent. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of people question that. They say, why are you buying 800 what kind of a, hectares? What, what kind of a piece of land? Hey, 800 uh, hectares uh, yeah. for that kind of money. So of course we know also that... Like it would bring forth the animals. <laughs> we know also that part of that uh, place is developed mm. for irrigation farming. They actually mentioned that uh, 2,000 hectares of it. So 2,000 hectares of the 8,000 hectares is developed already. So there's a lot of equipment there. Uh, we don't know... Uh, how much that equipment costs. We don't know how much that equipment will yield in terms of profits. Uh, we don't know that. Those are valid questions, I think. Yeah. Uh, but also, I've been itching to talk about this when you speak about Mr. Calabas saying the president could just grab land. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've got these laws in place. Yeah. Just like we've got a law that the president can take you to prison at his own feel mm. of volition. Mm. He can just say, I want Bartram to be in prison. Mm. And you'll be in prison. But the president does not use that those powers. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, if there's a business happening, by the way, uh, Zambif has been going through stuff and that's why they wanted to sell that thing. And they've been wanting to sell it for a very long time, by the way. Okay. This is not when they started. Yeah. Plus other properties that they have. Chaiwa Farm. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I've even lost my train of thought now. Uh, yeah. They wanted to sell it for a very long time. Yeah. This wanted... isn't the. Uh, this isn't when they were. Okay. Anyway, what I wanted to they've say they've been is going that, through stuff. Um, the yeah. president can't just. Yes, the fact mm. that it's developed and everything. Uh, how are we going to to look at the president if he just wakes up and says, "Zambia, if I, I want your eight thousand hectares to to be part of the to be property of the government, mm. and also send soldiers there, the way we've seen." How are we go? What are we going to make of President H H? I think let's uh, look at what the act what the act actually says. Mm. Uh, so Article Seventeen says, "Where a notice to acquire any land under this act has been published in terms of." Section 7, the person entitled to transfer the land shall, notwithstanding anything contrary to the anything to the contrary contained in any other law or any other order of any court otherwise than under this act, within two months of the publication of such notice, transfer the same to the president. So this is basically saying once a notice is given mm -hmm. that within two months this mm -hmm. transfer should happen. You've also noticed the language there, they say that... Eh? Uh, whatever is happening shouldn't be otherwise to other any other law in. or any other court order yes yeah. then um, uh, I'll read 18 and, and 20 uh, so 18 goes on to say every transfer to the president under this act shall notwithstanding uh, anything no I meant to read uh, 19 actually one where two months have elapsed since publication in terms of section 7 of a notice to acquire land and no transfer of such land has been executed in accordance with the terms of such notice or such other terms may have been agreed between the mini. Oh, okay, let me just explain. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, what this is saying is that there is a, a notice that is given to the, the person that owns the land, and they have to initiate a transfer. This, uh, if the transfer is not initiated, then the Ministry of Lands goes ahead to do the change. Yeah, but as long uh, as there's a notice and you're trying to grab it, it doesn't change. Right? Now, my assumption is the f the fact that the owner of the land is actually given notice and given the liberty to be the one to do the transfer, to initiate the transfer. I would like to believe that there is a compensation offered because if there's a notice given, then there's some form of rapport that is happening. That's what no, I would like to assume. That's not what Karabai Kalaba yes, that. that's Kalaba doesn't want us to fork any money to buy land in our own. That is not what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it could be implied, but that's not what he's saying. I think, mm -hmm. I think he's saying there's a procedure to do this. It's strange for the government to buy land because the government doesn't buy land. All land was originally the government's, mm -hmm. and all land reverts back to the government after 100 years. Mm -hmm. So there's no need for the government to buy land, but you the government just grab it. Yeah, with procedure. Of course, but it's... Like I gave you an example. We discussed this earlier, how uh, um, the ring road, the ring road, before they built it, there were houses mm -hmm. near the ring road that they had to buy off mm -hmm. um, in order to build the road. Mm -hmm. But they compensated them quite yeah. well, actually. Yeah, of course. Uh, that issue of compensation is not a new thing. It's been happening. I know that. Uh, not only the ring road, even sometimes they're building airports, uh, they do that. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, which only tells me that uh, even if the president has got the power to just grab land without, or the government has got power to just grab land without any compensation, uh, there's been a human face to it. This is why we can't just go and say, this farm which has got equipment, we are grabbing it, or we are giving you a notice to give us back this land when there's already equipment there. Yeah, but uh, so what's at fault here? Uh, okay, to me, <clears throat> what Kalawa is suggesting uh, is not in order. Even if it's the legal procedure, because contra doing it any other way apart from that is mm. not the correct procedure. So unless uh, mm -hmm. you talked about ring road, uh, it's, it's also possible that maybe that was a road reserve that the government had. That's why they're even compensating them. Uh, so it, it is possible, but okay. Mm -hmm. I like that you brought that up. Mm -hmm. What happens when someone builds where they're supposed to be a road? They are under the threat of demolition, right? Yes. And we know that there was a plan mm -hmm. for the city a long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, in such cases, we don't fault the law, the government, or no. the Ministry of Lands. Mm -hmm. In the same way, there is a provision that states mm -hmm. if a need arises, a need of interest on a particular piece of land, mm -hmm. the president is able to get it. Now, the law does not categorically say by force, mm -hmm. neither did Mr. Kalaba say by force. He said he can revoke 
So anyway, let me just get you clear. Zambif was running, this is a fully fledged farm, by the way. Yes. 200 hectares developed, center pivots and everything. So you are saying the government should go to Zambif and tell them, we like your center pivots and everything you have there. So we want to grab this place. Oh, we want to get this place. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, don't use the word grab. <laughs> start using it for government business. Yeah. That's what you want to happen. Or you want them to go to Zambif and say, get your center pivots out of this place. This is a very prime area. We want government to be doing the farming here. So get your center pivots here. All these buildings that you've done here, get them out. We want to do government work here. Because I think the main interest of government, that's why they're even saying they can spend 13 million. We thought they already spent it, but now we don't know. That's why they were spending that kind of money because of the their justification was that the part of it was developed. My, so are you saying that mm -hmm. we should go to them and say we want everything, including that, but to we'll go through the procedure, or you can get out your things, we just want the land and we'll go through the procedure? I think they can offer them a couple of options. Uh, if government is going there with a strong fist, they can offer to buy the equipment that's on the land as well as partner in terms of the how they will use the land. Mm -hmm. Because Zambif has the expertise. They yeah. can do a long-term partnership. Um, what I'm simply trying to say is I do not think the act mm -hmm. or Mr. Kalaba mm -hmm suggested that someone should be put in a position of disadvantage when land is being transferred to the president. I think that's what he suggested. I just think he was saying it's unusual that the government is buying land for the first time. Okay, we don't even know if it's the first time, right? Who would have heard of it by now? <laughs> yeah. yeah <anyway>. <laughs> <laughs> but but you get my point. Don't yeah. you think it's unusual that suddenly the government is buying land. Oh, of course, we need to question the, the purchase of that. Yes, yeah. and also, don't you think it's reasonable to bring up, mm -hmm. if the government needed land, what procedure they should go through? Yeah, 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 but to me as well, to me, the most questionable thing is not even that. Hmm. The most questionable thing is why are we spending $13 million? Exactly, which yeah. is Mr. Kalawa's question. Yeah, no, so... <laughs> Yeah, of course, that's a lot of money. We yeah. need to find out whether this thing is really viable. Is worth yes, that much. It's worth that much, exactly. Yeah. To me, the, the, that's where the questions sit. For me, I feel like every million dollars we have in this country mm. should be channeled towards our generation, as <laughs> as the Minister of, yeah. of, of Energy says, <laughs> power generation. Yeah. Um, that's what I think. Every single... Uh, oh, by the way, we'll give you a very wonderful, happy speech or announcement by the Minister of Energy. He definitely gives better addresses than the former Minister of Energy, I guess, Mr. Uh, Kalaba. I a feeling you, you didn't like uh, Mr. Kap Kapala. Mr. Kapala will give better speeches with fish. Uh, fisheries. <laughs> you were going to say that. <laughs> 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 Do you have anything against Mr. Kapala? Uh, yes. What? I don't think he took load shedding seriously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's, let's <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so Zambif did deny as well as the government through the, the, the secretary. The secretary yeah, to the, you also mentioned that, but they are doing due diligence because they are looking to get it through IDC, by the way, I should mention. Oh, yes. Um, yes, I never yes, mentioned yes, yes. ZDNS. Uh, but of course, we know that even if IDC gets it, it's possible that ZDNS can run it. Yeah, IDC is basically the, the government yeah. uh, buying on behalf of the government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on a shocking note, athletes have uh, complained that they have not received their promised allowances from the government. Uh, these are the athletes that went to represent Zambia. So I believe collectively as the athletes, mm -hmm. they, are, yes. they, are, they are complaining. Mr. Samkonga is quoted to have said it is imperative that the promised allowances are disbursed without further delay. It is our collective responsibility to ensure that we athletes feel valued and supported. A swift resolution to this matter is essential to maintaining the integrity of our sports programs and the trust of those who dedicate their lives to representing our nation, he said. So these guys were promised um, an allowance after uh, coming back that would be given to them on a daily, mm -hmm. was it yeah daily basis, mm -hmm. in order so. to help them start, mm -hmm. uh, so they can focus more on. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Also, they they promised mm -hmm. them uh, winning bonuses when they win when you win a medal. And I was to promise my bonus. Yes. Muzala just because they won but, one medal through Muzala. <laughs> he's already confirmed that he's not being paid. 
<laughs> now, I should say, what you read there is an excerpt from uh, a letter yeah. that Muzala wrote yeah. to the Ministry of Information. Except it correct, eh? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that Muzala Samkonga wrote to the Minister of Information. Now, if you read the letter, it was very vow, so to say. Like it was raw, you know. Mm. Uh, he didn't beat about the bush. Mm. He laid it all bare. And I'm sure they also shared it with the media houses. Now, Muzala Samkonga is a military personnel. He should mm. be a sergeant now, a flight, oh, sorry, a staff sergeant in uh, ZNS. Now, for a military, for a soldier to write a letter and endorse it, send it to a minister, this is real. It means a lot. They have not paid them. It means a lot, yes. yeah. They have not paid them for real. Yeah. Yeah. So it's quite sad, you know. They all were celebrating, especially Mzala Samkonga, the one who won bronze in the 400 meter uh, mains. They all were celebrating him, including the government themselves, including mm. the president. Mm. And now we are learning that the man has not been paid. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's quite interesting the times we are living in. How many things could go wrong? But we have got a two million kwacha for JJ's yeah. about JJ. Ah, you see now why no one's finding him. <laughs> they know there is nothing that's going to come. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be pursuing that money. You'll be finding yourself at NAPSA, following <laughs> up on the money. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Waka kakidemo no kakidamo. Washupa iwe. Yeah. Uh, so Zambia closed its borders last week uh, with DRC for a number of reasons. Uh, on one bre- In one breath, they tell us that it's because uh, there was a threat to the lives or the safety of Zambian drivers. And in the other breath, they tell us it's because Congo banned the exportation of certain products. So I don't know what is the real reason. I like the way you put it. Yeah, but they are giving us, uh, it almost seems to me like the Minister of Commerce was giving this reason while the other reason was the real reason, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but he didn't want to offend Mm -hmm. Congo. So he Mm -hmm. decided to withhold the other reason. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, okay. So what I can say about that is that uh, so when the when the news that just broke out, like this headline that you showed us, mm. the story says that it, it's it, apparently according to what you said that there were uh, there was unrest mm. in Congo, right? Mm. And then now afterwards we are learning it's not that all the borders were closed, just mm. in short, with uh, DRC. So to me, I'm thinking that I'm just now trying to reason with a minister. Uh, I'm thinking, or oh, maybe we should we should uh, play the bite where he met the he went to Kinshasa. Yeah, because now after this row, uh, several ministers, I think him and uh, the minister of the Copper Belt, they went and met the um, another minister or I don't know a couple of ministers from the DRC. Mm. Yeah, so this is this is what uh, was discussed. Okay, yeah, so they had a, uh, a cordial discussion. Take a look, Excellency. You mentioned that our response in closing the borders were disproportionate to the action you did of producing bans in trade between our two countries. Honorable Minister, our commitment to safety and security to both your and our human capital and equipment and also the travelers, trucks and everything remains a priority. But the moment we witnessed after a week that some of the properties coming in from our country in two years were being damaged, truck drivers were not getting the right protection and safety that was due, we decided to say, let us make sure that there is safety between movement between the two countries. Yeah, so that was our Minister of Commerce and the minister from uh, the DRC uh, also had a rebuttal. Uh, He was looking very apologetic, but take a look. Et le monde entier, and, uh, the world thought that we have the problem with Zambia. Alors que il y a pas fondamentalement de problème parce que les deux chefs d'État sont les deux chefs d'État les plus proches en termes de perspectives de développement. The interpreter was a bit faint, so if you know what they were saying, if you understand French, just uh, put it in the comments. Uh, I'm thinking he was uh, speaking about also they are, they are trying to save their own uh, interests mm. as a country. Yeah, because also where this started, the fact that uh, Congo banned some of uh, uh, some of uh, some of merchandise—I don't know if you can call it merchandise—that mm. uh, comes from Zambia or some items 
uh, which inclu- includes yeah, which includes <laughs> beverages, uh, even beer. Uh, wait. Mm. Did they ban things coming into Zambia or going to Congo? Because I think they banned exports from Congo. No, they banned going into Congo from yeah? Zambia. Yeah? Yes. So okay. Congo put a ban on importation of some products. Oh, products. Yeah, products. <laughs> yeah. Like lime uh, and other beverages, drinks and uh, beer and all those things. Mm. So now, this is now my thoughts. I was trying to reason with the minister, as I said, because he said two things. Initially, they told us it was because of the, the riots and everything. Yeah. And now they told us, now we're hearing in this meeting, because now he's facing his counterpart. He can't lie. Yeah. So now we are hearing that it is they did that as a result of the ban. Yeah. So this was, the way the Congo looked at it, it was a hostile thing. Oh, them, they, clo- them closing the borders. Yes, yeah. they yeah. said there's a ban on these things, and then they say, okay, tomorrow we're closing all the borders. Mm. Well, the bar, the trucks are not going to be crossing into your country and from your country. Mm. So to me, I'm thinking that eh, these people took it as a hostile thing. So now I was saying I was trying to reason with the minister because he also mentioned that eh, some of the truck drivers were being attacked when they enter Congo. So what I'm thinking, because I also heard a little bird, he told me that after that ban, things were still moving, but eh, they were smuggling them. So what I'm thinking that these same smugglers are the people who have been attacked. Mm. And now the system is so much that we know that they are smugglers and we even want to protect them yeah. when they have been attacked. Which I'm thinking if someone commits a crime, if they are Zambian, they commit a crime in Congo, and uh, either whether they are dealing with the law or it's just other people dealing with them, they need to be protected. And the, the afterwards, we can talk about what they were doing, mm. the wrong thing that they were doing. Mm. The fact that they are Zambian, they are in Congo, whatever happens, they need to be protected. Mm. So if indeed there were some trucks that were still crossing, and then people started attacking uh, the truck drivers, then it was justified that we closed the borders. Yeah. Uh, that we closed because of the ban, without even having this meeting, because this meeting was supposed to happen before the closure. Mm. Now that we, have the, we had the closure, we had an emergency meeting. So if the borders were closed before having this meeting solely because uh, Congo banned some products from entering their country, I think it's also wrong for the Zambian government. Yeah. Now you should also understand that these products, Congo banned them because they are being brought to Congo and being, uh, uh, being, being given prices at almost half as, as, as much as how they are buying it from. Like, so Congo produces beer. So the beer from Congo will be costing twice as much as the beer that's been imported from Zambia. Oh. So everyone who resorts to buying from people who are importing from Zambia, yeah. leaving their own people. Yeah. So in essence, they did it for their own people. Yeah. Yeah. So that eh, people should buy from them. Now, it still doesn't make sense if they are producing something there and it's more expensive than something that's been imported. But those are their issues. They deal with it yeah. the way they want. Yeah. Zambia and Congo really have this smuggling relationship. Eh? This year it's midi meal, next year it's drinks, the other year yes, it's... Yes, 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 because there's a very big market in Congo. Yeah. Yeah. And I also feel like uh, of late we've been... I don't know, our relationship with our neighbors, our relationships with our neighbors has been shaky. It's Zimbabwe. Been Zimbabwe. Yeah, recently yeah. there was a Sadiq Summit, President did attend HH. Yeah. It's just, yeah, everybody in Zimbabwe is talking about it. Only HH because a lot of people didn't attend, like some five presidents, but these are small countries that they are saying, Zambia is the biggest one. <laughs> so since Zambia didn't attend, people are talking about it. Yeah. And you see, uh, the where was it hosted? Zimbabwe. Yes. Okay. Because now the chairmanship has been transferred to Munanga. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So now what they are talking about is that HH is a good president. He cannot be supporting this uh, dictatorship. People from Zimbabwe uh, are saying that. Yes. That they are speaking against their own president. Yes. <laughs> so I hear that in Zimbabwe it's quite bad. What Not all of them, by the way. Some of them are supporters, of course. Yeah. But the majority are speaking against him. Isn't majority supporting? No. Zanu PF. No, I think it's the other way around. It's the other way around. Mm. So anyway, um, I hear it's bad in Zimbabwe. Like what we're doing here, like this, talking mm. about politics. Mm. Oh, they'll be waiting for you at the door. <laughs> when they when you're done, they'll clap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if we can have handcuffs. <laughs> Yeah, I've heard those <laughs> stories. I just don't like uh, putting them out there because now it, it will seem like someone is doing us a favor by allowing us to speak freely. I know in Africa, we're being, it's a favor. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. That's for entertainment it's, purposes. Everything we say on the show, I actually didn't finish. The... That's me. That was you? Mm. Oh, okay. Well, we're good? Yeah. Okay.
Uh, I didn't finish the statement earlier on. Everything we say on the show is for entertainment purposes only. We are not liable for what we say. <laughs> the show is a comedy show. It says Zambia's first <laughs> comedy late night. So the comedy is liable for everything we say. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, we'll see. But also, we've, we should mention that the, the borders have been opened, right? Yes, the yeah. borders have been reopened. The traders will come. The reopening of Kasumbalesa after a tempor temporary clo mm, well, <laughs> Tempor closure. <laughs> temporary closure. Uh, I think I'll stop correcting myself. I know. Just <laughs> you know what we mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, socially. Show, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's good that, that the, the borders have been opened because a lot of people are affected, even the people that are not involved in transporting these goods that they banned mm. because they've closed the border. Mm. So whether you're transporting copper, transporting gold, dogs, anything, nothing. Yeah. I hear this. Yeah, of course, that too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Socialist Party President Fred Membe has been uh, released on bond after being arrested last week. Or was it the other week? Uh, it was the other week, actually, um, for seditious practices. Mr. Membe alleged that um, the Zambian president received bribery, a bribe from, uh, what's his name? Felix Chiseked. Chise, Chise, mm. Chise, the pronunciation is Chiseked. Uh, from Felix Shisekedi, yeah. uh, amounting $20 million to buy the country's silence on corruption. Mm -hmm. This is what he said. Now, this, of course, wasn't a statement for entertainment purposes from Mr. Membe. So the police had to pick him up <laughs> <laughs> uh, and show him the inside of a cell. And strategically, he, because he did this in July, right? The post was in July? Yes. Strategically picked him up on a Thursday. They waited. That they know that... <laughs> That uh, Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday, oh, there's the, no officer in charge. The, the, the CIO is going, eh? Mm -hmm. Oh, but okay. <laughs> uh, you can get Mr. Membe now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he's yeah. been released on bond. Um, he was there five days. He was there for five days. Um, he gave a statement shortly after his release. What baffled me was the introduction. Wow. <laughs> What we are seeing are actions of little frightened men scared of their own shadows because of the many crimes they have committed against the Zambian people. But it will not take them anywhere. They promise things they can't do. They promise policy bonds for bondable offenses. They don't do it. But takule ko fileba tuala. But ilo uchange shwango ko pungwa ta. Na toti la mkuu. That was Mr. Fred Membe. Uh, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and also press that uh, notification bell. Uh, so make sure you watch this until your end because we've got a story about uh, load shedding. We all know that now we're into 17 hours of load shedding. So make sure you stick around till the end and you'll see that. So I don't know. It's funny how, first thing I, I noticed, I don't know, it could be trivial. It's funny how politicians just disregard their wives when they are in the heat of the moment. His UPND wife, yeah. <laughs> no, no longer UPND. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's nice how they just, you know, and then Chalida Paja, if he wants to leave, he's in a grandiose. Uh, his wife is here, he tends yeah. from this side. <laughs> And you know, <laughs> since now he's the man of the moment, everyone's just following him. Yeah. And then and the wife has, like to, like. has to be following, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've, <laughs> I've, I've seen that also with Ed Galungo a lot. Yeah. The wife is the one who's uh, escorting to court. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> the wife now is asking for attention. And yeah, you, on that one, I yeah. think HH has done very well. Oh, yeah, yeah. We should give it to him. Yeah. HH yeah. does not leave the wife behind like that. Yeah. Yeah, we hope we won't see it with him because sometimes <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah, not yet she's but. Yet she's the most quiet yeah. person. You never yeah. hear her giving out statements. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like, that why you <laughs> No, but also we don't know for now. Whether they stop? No, no, no. Why? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, should, well, that should be quiet forever. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. but to be fair, these people, maybe before mm. entering State House, that's if he'll ever enter. <laughs> We've heard from his wife before. Uh, Edgar Lungu, while he was in State House, we heard from his wife. I'm appealing. Mm. So, yeah. We <laughs> yeah. Can. <laughs> yeah, he mentioned uh, frightened little men. Yeah. Uh, those who've been promising bond. I don't know if he was talking about HH. <laughs> yeah, but HH is on record even when he was. He is talking about HH. <laughs> <laughs> after, he was, after HH was, was the president, he's on record of saying that. Shanshan now as you arrested, Shanshan now as Yes. Given no, no, he is talking about HH. Yeah, Definitely. Little men. But we just will not participate in his statements that we are not for entertainment purposes. Frightened little men. Uh, what are they frightened? Frightened. There's there was a way he man. pronounced it. Oh. <laughs> There's this way that this guy pronounces things. <laughs> and do you know, uh, have you noticed that Mimbe sounds the same as his vice president? Oh, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Ah, yeah, actually, I, I heard it last Smart, week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of us. Uh, do you know how you've been called? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, anyway, it's good that he's out. Uh, he should deal with these things. Uh, we should deal with these things according to where they are supposed to be done. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's good that he's out. Uh, yeah, we know that he'll be in very soon again. No, oh, definitely. Next definitely. Quarter. It's a quarterly. Mm. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's not slack in making seditious statements. Uh, no, uh-huh. he's not slack. <laughs> yeah, uh, in an official uh, announcement now, <laughs> what we have been experiencing already has officially <laughs> has officially been announced to us by Zesco uh, that we are set to experience 17 hours of load shedding from the current 14 hours. Now, when did we switch to 14 hours? <laughs> oh, now I saw. <laughs> now I know where that came from. Yeah. When did we switch to 14? Did they give an announcement for 14 hours? Because we would have given it to you. I don't think they did. Uh, oh, he said 14 hours? Yeah, he says we are currently at 14. Really? The last announcement was 12. Oh, but uh, we had... And... No, 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 no. The, as of the last... Uh, no, but when did you start having 14 hours? <laughs> Excuse me. That this, was the time you asked someone ah, who's very regular or who's this, very this past week, inconsistent. This past week, I think, is mm. when we began having 14 hours. I, I, I would like to believe, or oh, it was the other week, mm. but the Minister mm-hmm. of Energy mm-hmm. talked about it. Mm-hmm. He said, which resulted in more than 12 hours of lodge shedding. Okay. So he knows. This minister? Yes. In, in the statement we're about to show, mm. so he yeah, knows. So it's just two hours more, my friend. So he was right. He told you. Yeah. You knew it wasn't 12 hours. No, we knew in practice, but on paper it was 12 hours. No, he told you it's not 12 hours. After More experiencing it, obvi- after experiencing it already. But anyway, you listen <laughs> oh, but to But we've already had that experience of experiencing something before they tell us. Uh, yeah. they tell us after we start experiencing it. <laughs> <laughs> but you listen to the minister as he explains this. I wish to update the nation as follows. Current energy generation levels during this week the available power generation remained at an average of 890 megawatts against a total installed generation capacity of 3,777 megawatts. The nation average peak demand remained at 2,400 megawatts resulting in a power deficit of 1,510 megawatts. To address this deficit, Zesco Limited, together with other traders, are currently importing a total of 496 megawatts of power from the region, leaving a net deficit of 1,014 megawatts, which has resulted in more than 12 hours of power rationing throughout the country. So you hear that? We were not having 12 hours. 
he has clearly stated that we're having slightly more than 12 hours, but we'll not hold that against him. He's a very happy man. And <laughs> he continued his statement in happy fashion. Given all these factors, it is necessary to consider extending the current power rationing hours, especially for residential customers. From last week's update, this code did indicate that the average power rationing time was 14 hours per day. Therefore, the nation is now informed that the official power rationing hours will extend to 17 hours daily effective 1st September 2024. It's a very painful statement to make, but we would love to be factual and bring our citizens to understand where we are. Oh, 17 hours. Yeah, 17 hours, Lord Shady. Uh, it's not a surprise here at Amazing Minds, of course. Uh, we already told you that we're expecting worse. Uh, their excuse is, of course, the, the water levels at the Kariba. Mm. The water allocation from the Zambezi River Authority mm. is depleting. They allocation. Of, allocation mm. to the nation. <laughs> Power generation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now they are speaking about uh, 10%. That's all that we are remaining with. Mm. And they are saying we're starting in September. So in short, and this is a message that is hard to talk about. In short, if we're not having rain this year, in fact, we'll, uh, it would be good if rain started like in October. Mm. If it starts come November, come last, ah, we're in deep trouble. Mm, mm. Very no, deep I like trouble. the censorship. <laughs> 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 we're in deep <laughs> trouble. Yeah, we're in deep trouble, my friend. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, I can't even begin to talk about the. Nishabantu varika no kupia pakuiba mawa ma transformers na 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 masala. Varika kupia na masala. These guys who steal oil from transformers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't even know there was oil in transformers. Oh. When they steal oil from transformers, they will stop. Yeah, it will be a thriving business now. Yeah, but we don't want them. Today for varipia. Varipia. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. What did you think about the show? Ah, I'm good. I enjoyed the show. You enjoyed the show? Yeah, as always. <laughs> and uh, just to end the show today, uh, of course, Monday is Fridays, 22 hours Central African time, and the podcast is available Mondays, Fridays, 20 hours Central African time. Um, subscribe, hit the bell, share. To end the show, we'll leave you with a video of, wow, all these things are happening. <laughs> Our president is receiving honorary PhDs and doctorates. It's the third one? <laughs> yeah, third one. And uh, counting. UK, there was uh, Rwanda. Is it Rwanda or Uganda or something? Rwanda, I believe. An I African think, yeah. Country, yeah. And now Unza. And now Unza. Yeah. But also, aren't Unza abusing these honorary degrees and honorary PhDs? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, they gave Mnangagwa. They gave Ed Galungu. Or, so or, it's or like they they're also in the business of appeasing. Ah. Anyway, you guys leave it in the comments. We shall see it and we'll get back to your comments on our next Monday show. For now, it's bye bye. <laughs>